Alright lads, welcome back to my channel. If you are new here, my name is Tom Harlock and I do not have an intro, but I am reborn from the ashes of my own destruction. And if I'm rising like a phoenix, the subject of today's video is perishing like a gangrenous wood pigeon. Nikocado Avocado is an internet persona created by 29-year-old Nicholas Perry. Alongside his husband Orlin, Nick documents his daily life via YouTube, showing us the ins and outs of... Well, his mouth and arse, so I suppose. You guys, I just pooped. I just freaking pooped. Primarily a mukbang channel, a South Korean concept meaning to eat whilst broadcasting. Ooh. Which, of course, has been bastardized by the USA. And with thousands of videos, millions of subscribers, and billions of views, the state's biggest state is Mr. Nicholas. Nick has gained a reputation in the digital world for his soap opera antics, gobbling shite loads, and painting the walls brown. What the f***? But Nick hasn't always been this... loose. Clips available online show an unrecognisable shadow of the man we see today. Thank you. Mm-hmm. Oh, you put butter on it. Mm-hmm. Trying to fatten me up even more. So how on earth did we get here? Are we watching performance art? Perhaps a high concept character whose method acting has gone too far? Or should we be concerned for the lad? With five YouTube channels and more uploads this month than I've posted in the entire history of my account, the wealth is adding up, but at what cost? I could barely even walk. I took extra medicine today that my doctor instructed me to do. As a formerly gifted child who is now a troubled adult, when it comes to neurologically flopping, my empathy knows no bounds. So to witness a man go from May Queen in Midsummer to bedbound Dumbo cosplay, well boys, consider my interest peaked. Ow! <laughs> this is an emotional and turbulent roller coaster that I couldn't help but fast track myself onto, and it appears you boys are joining for the ride. So, for today's video, I thought it would be a grand idea to take a look at Matey Boy's many trials and tribulations. One, two, three, go! Yeah. In an effort to determine what's wrong with Nick Ocado Avocado. It's time for disability! Got my haircut. Oh yeah, he got a haircut and they messed up the teepee. It's okay. With his channel created in May 2014, the earliest video available to watch is from September 1st, 2016, titled Why I'm No Longer a Vegan Influencer. In this, Nick explains that after years of being a vegan social media star, he's sacking that shit off. Just because I'm vegan doesn't mean that my entire life has to be about veganism. With his pet bird and v-necks turning my stomach, yeah he's a bit wet behind the ears, but he's clean and coherent, a far cry from the goblin we see today. Please don't tell me what I should do with my channel. It's like telling me, you need to do this with your life. Um, telling me to do more activism so that I can, I can be at your vegan level. Seeing this version of Nick is honestly a bit jarring, and knowing the path he's about to undertake is kind of depressing. Despite removing most of Vegan Day's videos from his channel, I did unearth footage of an enthusiastic young gimp just buzzing about saving the environment. Hi little sloths, it is time for my avocado mukbang. In fact, it was his love of avocados that earned him the moniker he goes by to this day. A combination of vegans being too pushy with their activism and a lack of nutrients making their brains go soft was Nick's reasoning for leaving the community behind. So I'm going through like this period of like questioning everything and just like wanting to do better. That's what it really comes down to. I, I don't want to be part of this group of people anymore. I, I don't want to be called a vegan YouTuber. I can kind of see his point, because most vegans I know are a bit loud, but by the looks of things, Nick was that annoying vegan, so get back in your box, mate. <laughs> People are crazy. You know, the, ve the vegans on YouTube are just crazy. Despite bailing on the lifestyle, he did stick with the diet. From vegan mac and cheese to meat-free fried chicken, Nick would prepare his food, eat on camera, and share stories about his life. Orlin and I met over three years ago. Crazy. He thought I was weird. I thought he was weird. It took us a good year of being friends. A year and a half of being friends and learning to trust each other and value, value each other. 
for who we are, not what we look like. Don't get me wrong, boys. Watching anybody sloppily eat food makes me violently ill. But back then, Nick had a shred of dignity, an ounce of decorum, and a pet bird on his shoulder. So I could understand the gimmick. With each video garnering hundreds of thousands of views, the like to dislike ratio not being too horrific, and the comments seeming generally supportive, I can respect the niche that Nick has carved out for himself. I think I'd be hard pressed to find too many people who wouldn't want to make a living goblin on camera, but for some, just making a living isn't enough. And occasionally, the greed takes over. So let's see how much I weigh. I don't even know. I think 160, maybe 160. That has to be wrong. Guys, I'm 200 pounds. <laughs> Kicking off 2017, the couple announced they would be ending their 10 year stint as vegans and would be celebrating by polishing off a sweaty pepperoni pizza. How are they going to have real cheese again? Amazing. I'm very happy. Cheese that tastes like cheese. <laughs> I mean, if you wanted a good dairy-free cheese alternative, look no further than my slice, mate. Melts in your mouth and everything. I promise I do wash my knob. In the 12 minute video, the couple gush over each slice, throbbing at the taste. Delicioso, as they would say here. Uh, people are giving us weird looks, but it's okay. Well, matey boy, you best get used to it, because there's plenty more of them to come. <laughs> the feedback to this video was mixed, with many users expressing their concerns that gluttony could lead Nick down a slippery slope. One last four years ago commented, I'm curious to see whether he will gain weight. Well, darling, wonder no more, because I'm here from the future to satiate your curiosity. <laughs> He's absolutely massive. Other users expressed their disappointment. Nick had built his entire identity around his dietary choices, so the principles he once preached in an effort to convert his viewers appeared, upon reflection, to be full of shite. I used to make animal rights videos extensively. Every week, I put hours and hours and hours into doing it, just because it felt like the right thing to do. A lot of Nick's audience were absolutely fuming that he denounced the lifestyle he so adamantly promoted. And this anger would boil into the mainstream when just 48 hours after hoovering up the Domino's pizza, Nick would upload a 51 minute video titled, Why Veganism is Wrong and Makes People Go Crazy. And if matey boy's anything to go by, I'm inclined to believe him. And maybe that's why we all go a little insane. Why so many people are emailing me saying they feel isolated, why they're getting depression, they're going to the hospital, why well, I feel like I'm going crazy right now. Oh, I'm no nutritional expert, certainly not a vegan, and truly couldn't give less of a shite what you choose to consume, but my body's been surviving off nothing but caffeine, cancer sticks, and the occasional granola bar for years, and my brain is thriving. I've had a single thought in about four weeks, but still. <laughs> <gasps> Hang on, I think I've had a fiery neuron, boys. Maybe I am a vegan. I'm wearing half a cow. Never mind, back to the video. <laughs> it is annoying to have to, go, like, be obsessed. Be obsessed. Where am I going to eat next? Where am I going to get my food? Is, it, is, it, is that vegan? <gasps> is that vegan too? Oh, now I have to vegan. Oh, I have to. It's annoying. Sure, he'd shown discontent with the community before, but he had never been actively anti-vegan. So to see the once cheery, parrot-adorned avocado muncher sob over the ramifications of chewing plants was new territory. There will always be destruction. This earth is doomed whether we're here or not. Citing chronic exhaustion as a result of denying his body certain food groups, Nick would go on to upload multiple videos detailing his misery. When I was a raw foodist, I felt like I was a zombie. I felt like I was deteriorating. My personality, my true sense of personality was gone. With the waterworks in full effect, Nick had unlocked a new way of gaining attention. One that didn't require him shagging his intestines with lentils and chickpeas. Drama. An abundance of drama. Everyone's fit. Well, not mine. I can't stand being in hot water, boys. It stresses me right out. I do like profiting from it, though. <laughs> what? These turtlenecks aren't going to pay for himself. I don't know what else to say. Going vegan is not going to solve the Earth's problems. Uh, I mean, fair point, mate. Going vegan may not fix the Earth's problems, but therapy might put a dent in yours. Being alive is a selfish thing. I'm sorry. I don't know what else to say. Pe vegans think we live in some kind of this magical plane. No, the reality is to be to have life, you must take life. This is why people see veganism as a crazy religion. 
due to Nick's unhinged methods of communication, news outlets quickly picked up on the story of the ex-vegan gone rogue, and I believe it was this coverage that convinced Nick the easiest way of gaining attention online is to be a living, breathing mess. In his defence, it's definitely worked before. In one video posted March 24th, 2017, titled, I'm getting fat and I don't know why, Nick declares an emergency. I have gained weight. And I don't even know why. I don't know why. I have a fast metabolism. I work out three times a week. Fuck it out, mate. It's hardly a medical mystery, is it? Not exactly one for Agatha. What is this? <laughs> I mean, I'm no medical doctor, mate, but I believe the technical term is pasta tits. Continuing through 2017, and Nick was firmly into his tapeworm era, with nearly every video consisting of Nick knocking back sloppy noodles of every variety. The thumbnails were grotesque, the portion sizes gluttonous, and the uploads became daily. Sloth. Would you like some more? Oh, and he had a sloth for a bit, but they revolt me, so I'm choosing to ignore that moment in time. Videos such as Fire Taki Noodles and the 25,000 Calorie Challenge gained millions of views, but as Nick's channel grew, so did he. <laughs> I'm blessed with a really high metabolism. I mean, even though I gained like 50 pounds since I started this, you guys would have gained probably 200 by now, let's be real. I mean, Given how much I eat, I should be a lot larger, but I'm not. Over the years, the boys' relationship has been documented online, with clips available from 2013 showing a fresh-faced all-in and a surprisingly talented violinist Nick years before their relationship started. <laughs> With all in in Florida and Nick in New York, the two would meet after a chance encounter on a Facebook page for fruity vegans. I have these roses here for Orlin. Mmm, they smell so nice. I hope he likes them. I know he'll like them. The boys would fly back and forth to visit one another, eventually settling down in Colombia. Guess who's here? And it was from here where Nick cultivated his YouTube channel. He's eating. I'm vlogging. Look at our messy house. <laughs> Hi guys. I'm actually in the process of cleaning. From Q&As to Orlin's proposal, the two love to share intimate moments online. Lucky I say. We were walking around, it was so beautiful, and all of a sudden he opened up an avocado, <laughs> and there was a ring inside, and I was like, what? But building a garden together doesn't ensure a bed of roses, and issues surrounding the boys' relationship had surfaced previously with one video on his channel detailing multiple affairs Nick got involved with prior to their marriage. Like, I, I don't, I don't know, like, what do I do to earn back trust, earn back it, like... I don't know. With Nick not being an official resident, he needed to leave the country every couple of months per his visa requirements, and it was on one of these excursions that Nick decided to get dicked down by a grand total of 12 men! There were 12 people in total. Putting that out there, I'm forever gonna be shamed. But you know, I'm that human. You remember. No, I remember. I was not intoxicated for any of them. <laughs> and if that wasn't bad enough, he only went and gave all in bloody knob rot. At least I hope it wasn't bloody. I mean, it's not like you've been collecting more bugs anymore. Like you stopped that hobby. <sighs> yeah. <laughs> hobby. <laughs> However, it was in 2018 when their relationship was really laid bare for everyone to see. My husband is the type of man that when I walk downstairs and I go into the office to my computer to check my mail for the day, there's flowers on my computer. In a 20 minute video titled Tragic News, Nick details how his relationship is being tested by having to leave each other all the bloody time. And here I am today, five years later, deported. If I don't get my marriage visa, I go to Colombia as a tourist and the whole thing goes over again, if they even let me back in. With the threat of deportation looming over their heads, stress levels increased tenfold, and so did the theatrics. <laughs> And from here, things took a rapid downturn. So Orlin's been sick for the longest time I've known him. 
posted June 26, 2018, Nick uploaded a video titled, Why My Husband Left Me. He has an autoimmune disease. And it's a really bad one. There's no cure. In this, Nick explains that Orlin has an autoimmune disorder, and the stress that Nick is causing the relationship is making Orlin poorly. And he always says, you're gonna kill me, you're gonna kill me, you're gonna kill me. Because I make him stressed, because I'm dramatic. Alright, well call me old fashioned if you want, boys, but I believe some things should just be kept offline. But with each personal anecdote earning the boys thousands of dollars, the motivation to overshare is pretty bloody obvious. He also stopped being attracted be to me because he kept saying over and over, like, you know, I can't stay hard when I look at you or something, or like, you're not the man that I fell in love with when I first found you. <laughs> Aww. I mean, I don't really give a shit. In the nicest possible way, if you boys can't respect each other, why on earth should I take you seriously? With more videos being uploaded and the titles increasing in intensity, I would have an ounce of sympathy for the lads, but everything they do is for clicks and views. I just got in um, an argument, a fight with Orlin, and I know it's my fault, and I just can't help it, and also, like, it's his fault too, and I don't, I don't know. <laughs> Over the years, a lot of people have expressed their concerns for Orlin. Oh no, he's trapped in a loveless marriage! How do we save- Well, hold your horses, boys, because I can guarantee you every inch of this is planned. These lads would have sat down years ago and decided to throw away every shred of dignity they own in exchange for wealth beyond their wildest dreams. And who can blame them, to be fair? Life's well hard, so if you can make it a bit easier, crack on, boys. If I wasn't so irrevocably in love with myself, I'd probably join you. The boys did get back together if you're concerned, not that you should be. These lads have broken up and made up more times than I have fingers and toes to count on. And I'm from the West Country. Oh, and if you're wondering what happened to the bird... Mr. Noodle's no longer in my life. <laughs> and that's the truth. R.I.P. Mr. Noodles. Gone but never forgotten. That's it. As a general rule on YouTube, as is life, birds of a feather flock together. The beauty lot of mates, kind of. The gamer gimps are pally. And the commentary community are often seen mingling. Without me. Didn't want an invitation anyway, boys. And the mukbang circuit isn't much different. And 2019 would see Nicholas expand his social circles. From Hungry Fat Chick to Trisha Paytas, Nick would collaborate on eating shows across the internet. In one particular video, on a channel owned by a chap named Zach Choi, Trish, Zach and Nick sit in silence as they slurp up nuclear fire noodles. And over 45 million people watched it. 45 million? You're taking the limp biscuit? Unless you're an MMA fighter that's been jabbed in the head one too many times, this shouldn't be your version of entertainment, boys. And if it is, you need to have your human rights stripped away from you. <laughs> Imagine if I had the power to... I'd probably starve myself, let's be honest. <laughs> The mukbang community, as strange as it is to some, is a booming industry, with hundreds of channels consuming thousands of calories day in, day out. Oh yeah, baby. Beauty bite. If you leave out the kinky side, and trust me boys, there's definitely a kinky side, and if you ignore the moral reprehensibility associated with mass consumption whilst half the world is bloody starving, and if you turn a blind eye to the potential disorderly eating that may be triggered as a result of such activities, it's just harmless fun in it boys. Just gobblers gobbling away, no drama to see here. Alright, maybe a little bit of drama to see here. And I know what you boys are thinking, can something be pink and intense? Well, the answer's yes, and the name is Trisha Paytas. 2019 would see two of the internet's biggest trolls battle her out over an historic ghosting scenario. Honestly, can these people get real problems? I've been ghosted by my own will to live for three months. Don't see me complaining about it, do you? Uh, maybe do a little bit. In 2017, before the sloppy times, Nick was a big fan of Trisha. I loved 
her energy, I loved everything about her. So, when he posted a violin cover to one of their songs and received their praise, he was ecstatic. I can't even speak on how I'm feeling right now. This is so touching and I can't articulate my words. I have loved you for so long as a fan and this blew my mind when I saw it in my, in my subscriptions. Now in 2019, with his newfound notoriety and penchant for drama, Nick uploaded a video in May titled Exposing Trisha Paytas with Receipts. We need to get together in person. There's something about you. So she commented that and I was like, oh my God, I got noticed by Trisha Paytas, wow. And she tweeted me and she said something about getting together. Once inside the DMs, the two tossed around the idea of a collaboration. Nick needed to visit the States per his visa requirement, so to go to Los Angeles and collaborate with Trisha would make an inevitable trip worthwhile. Two birds, one stone, baby. But fast forward to the proposed date, and Nick never hears from Trisha again. I would go into more detail, but it's just messes being messes, boys. They're both as dense as dying stars, not a single reliable narrator in sight. It's kind of entertaining, I'll give you that. <laughs> Honestly, Trisha? Yeah. Everyone sees my old videos when I was skinny, and they think I was just this beacon of health. They did eventually get together on an episode of Trisha's podcast. Again, I eat like shit now, mm -hmm. but yeah, it wasn't just because I was skinny doesn't mean I was healthy. And it was quite nice and insightful, really, until you learned Nick was pissing out of his arsehole the entire time. Well, I'm sitting on this couch, and I thought I had to like loosen, you know, relax the digestive tract and just go beep. I wait till the coast was clear, and I stood up, and I turned behind me, and there was poop on our couch. After a quiet summer of shitting himself, the rest of 2019 would be easy breezy for Nicholas, until a young last name Stephanie Sue came along and brought that crashing down. I just kind of want to talk to you guys about what's been happening the past couple of days, because a lot has happened, and it's been really stressful. The past couple of days have been filled with just a lot of Manipulation. On the 21st of December 2019, fellow mukbang creator Stephanie Sue uploaded a 47 minute video titled Why I'm Scared of Nick Ocado Avocado. At this point, my home safety is kind of in question, so normally I wouldn't talk about stuff like this or make a video on it. A lot of things can just be solved offline, but because of how how extreme things have gotten recently, I, I just want to share my side. And the fallout was extremely melodramatic, and I loved every minute of it. 320.4 According to Stephanie, a collaboration between the two went horribly wrong when she discovered Nick taking photos of her security system and posting them online, as well as pressurizing her to discuss YouTubers in a malicious way. There's no way Nick did not know that I was so uncomfortable for those 30 minutes because I was trying not to cry for those 30 minutes. I'll be honest with you boys, I'm sure there's an inch of human emotion buried deep down throughout these videos, but you have to take all internet theatrics with a pinch of salt. Everything is hyperbolized for clicks and views, and the parasocial relationships that you have with YouTubers only works to benefit them. They don't like you, but they want you to think you're mates. Obviously, I'm extremely different and not like the rest. <laughs> Today, I'm responding to Stephanie Sue and the video she made about me entitled Why I'm Scared of Nick Ocado Avocado. Nick went mental at Stephanie in a 90-minute video accusing her of lying. I have various pieces of the story that Stephanie decided to leave out of hers. And then he went after Zach because he didn't back him up. I'm not here to persuade people that he's an awful person or something. I just want people to know where I'm coming from. And in retaliation, Zach retained a lawyer. Crikey, what a mess, eh? If you're struggling to pick a side, I went with Zach Choi because he has the nicest bone structure. The controversy surrounding Nick continued to rise, and by mid-2020, cracks were starting to appear. In a video titled, I'm quitting YouTube and deleting all of my channels, Nick details his sadness at how his life has devolved into a gelatinous mess due to him sharing it so publicly. This is too much attention. I never thought it'd be this much attention. And the, the negative attention too. I know I bring it on myself, so don't say, well, it's all your fault. A lot of it is, I know, a lot of it is. But some of it's not. I just wanna push that button and say, bye. I'm not terrible of a person. Well, you'll, I'll let you win. Oh, 
I'm sad, just sad, but this isn't a train station. No need to announce your departure. I need to leave YouTube. Okay, I'll do it because you want me to. Bye. This announcement would be undermined by, well, Nick's own actions. Would he return to YouTube just a day later? I love cheese. I love cheese. I love cheese. Yes, I do. Honestly, what is it with YouTubers and being overtly dramatic when it comes to taking breaks? Can't you just piss off for five months and come back like nothing happened? The cycle of threatening to leave only to return days later with his stomach between his legs continued throughout 2020 and only aided in up in Nick's notoriety. <sighs> From his meltdowns in his car to his Anne Boleyn Reed parodies, Nick was everywhere. That's why if you look at my cart here, I'm on Octavia. I've lost 89 pounds. Nick Ocado fever was more contagious than my shaft during my teenage years. Couldn't scroll through Reddit or Twitter without seeing a clip of Nick. Uh, being Nick. And the launch of his adult subscription service only fueled this fire. For the low, low price of £20 a month, you can take a glance inside Nick's batty. I don't want to shame anybody, but if you're going to provide adult-only content, can you please clean out your grimy little ring piece? Who wants my wet bussy? I've got to be honest with you, mate. I'd rather turn my eyelids inside out and sneeze into a vat of sand, but... Thanks for the offer, I suppose. Videos of Nick being internally rearranged have done the rounds on Twitter. Hand on heart, everything I know about Nick Ocado Avocado's asshole, I've learned against my own free will, yet I could probably draw that bad Donna kebab from memory. Extra garlic mayo, let me say that for free boys. <laughs> Actually, I should probably charge by the word, shouldn't I? You're all filthy bastards, aren't you? Overload. <laughs> Bringing us into 2021 and the world is falling apart and so are Nick's knees. I'm living. I can't wait. <laughs> you can't get up. <laughs> With more eating, threats of leaving and airing his dirty laundry in public, it appears Nick is determined to troll until his last breath which unfortunately may not be too far away. I am not okay at all. Oh, that's a good sign, isn't it, mate? I am off to go see a doctor. It's currently October 2021, and the last upload on Nick's channel was titled My New Diet as a Disabled Person. First, I get a hernia down here. Now I get cracked ribs up here. Oh, well done. Congratulations. Buzzing for you, lad. What a life, eh? In fact, the last six videos on Nick's channel were all titled My New Diet as a Disabled Person. Oh, shoot do we're home. Hello, we're back home. shoot do I never even left the house because I'm disabled. Jesus Christ, mate. You've already made the money from it once. Can't you piss off and get a new disability to rinse? I sound ableist, but it's because I don't believe a word that comes out of this man's mouth. Ouch, my rib cage. Ouch, my knees. My knees, my knees, ouch. I just don't believe the man. Broke your ribs, have you, Nick? Go on then, prove it. Put them out your arsehole. Suck yourself off. I believe the reason Nick has so many YouTube channels is just in case they get terminated for breaking guidelines. And with petitions circulating the internet suggesting YouTube do just that, maybe Nick's smarter than all of us. Oh my god, we're about to watch a show! I do enjoy how Nick leans into the character that we all know he's playing. It's called Watch the World Struggle. I love watching poor people. They struggle- oh! I just need popcorn. I could sit here and watch them struggle all day. Some of his teammates could take no. And if by any chance Nick is watching this, I do want to say congratulations on being mildly entertaining and building a career at being grotesque. You've done wonders for yourself, mate, but you're taking it too far now. You were funny three years ago. Now you just make me feel sick. Clean your sheets, wipe your arsehole, sort your airline out, and have a day off, will you? So we have... <gasps> cheese curds! <laughs> Alright, well on that note, I think that's all the time I've got for today's video. But if you did enjoy it, and you're so inclined, make sure to leave me a like. 
If you have a singular thought running through your head, pop it down below in the comment box. And if you want more videos from me, you can always click subscribe. Cheers for watching as always, I really appreciate it. See you boys next time. Bye bye.